Hey everyone, and welcome back. My name is Sam. And I'm Melissa. I grew up in the FLDS community. It is a polygamous group run by Warren Jeffs. And I moved out of that community when I was 18 years old. I was raised LDS. Sam and I have been married for eight years and have two beautiful babies together. Yes, we do. And we're so excited to be back. I know it's been a while, but we're excited to be back. We have so much to share with you, so much going on. So we're excited to talk a little bit more about what has been going on within the FLDS community, Warren Jeffs, other leaders coming out and claiming that they are speaking for Warren Jeffs and those types of things. Yeah, it's been kind of interesting that recently, you know, we thought, okay, Warren's been in prison for a really long time. Yep. Um, the people have moved out of the Crick or, you know, uh, Colorado City, Hilldale area. And so it kind of felt like the FLDS are just kind of fading. They're getting more used to regular people. They're living among regular communities. You know, mm -hmm. girls are having regular jobs. They're going to school. You know, kids are going to school, like public school. All these type of things that we kind of felt hopeful that like maybe they would just slowly be integrated more into regular society. Just when you thought everything was becoming normal, right? Or a little, yes. bit, a little, or bit, a little bit more bit normal. normal, right? Mm -hmm. Or that there was hope that more of these kids were going to have somewhat more normal upbringings and slowly be able to leave realizing that the outside world isn't as scary and bad as what they thought. But then, of course, Warren Jeffs realizes that he's losing his control, he's losing his power, and so he tries to reel who is still willing to listen back in. Yep, and, and adding all of these really strict rules and guidelines to follow on top of the already really strict rules and, and guidelines, you know, and uh, it just, it's just, just when you think, wow, okay, it couldn't get any more crazier. There couldn't be anything else to require of these people. There comes another list. And uh, and it just goes to show how faithful these members are to him, though, because a lot of them are continuing to just go with it and, and be obedient and follow the rules. So it's a lot. There's just a lot going on. Yeah, we were recently yeah. with a lot of um, Sam's biological siblings and... You know, a lot of them were talking about, like, have you heard of his latest revelations and um, some of the things that are being asked and required and which of their extended family members have chosen to just like say, no, I don't think so and kind of walk away. Mm -hmm. And those that are like, yeah, I have siblings and the girls quit their jobs and they got them out of school immediately upon these revelations. And so... It's still definitely affecting a lot of people's lives when these decisions are made, even though it seems like such a small community at this point, but yeah. it is making some some big waves still. And so we wanted to share with you guys, one of the things that, um, there's been a lot of revelations and we'll do more videos on some of them just so that you can see where the church is headed. Cause a lot of people ask that, they're like, do you think it's even gonna be here in the future? And as much as we'd love to say, it's just going to kind of like obscure off into oblivion um, after Warren Jeffs, it's very clear there are like people that are ready to step into his role already. Yes. And yeah. even a lot of these relations, like a lot of Sam's siblings who have a lot of like ties still to the community have said like, oh, everybody knows it's not really Warren. Right. So mm -hmm. the rumor is there's lots of rumors out a there. Lots that, of rumors yeah. out there. But from the inside sources is that a lot of people are still kind of recognizing that Warren Jeff's son, Helaman, is now the man that is speaking, technically speaking, for Warren and passing along the messages for Warren, claiming that they're coming from Warren. The, but everybody's not sure about that. The the question behind it all is is it coming from Warren still or is Helaman? making this up himself and making it seem like it's coming from Warren. Well, and it's a little bit of deja vu because especially in the Keep Sweet documentary, if anybody's watched that, you see how like Warren just got really close to his father before his father's death, right? He got close to him so much so that everything was still Ruland's um, revelations, but everyone really felt like it was kind of Warren. And now we're kind of seeing that shift in power where it's Helaman is relaying the message and he's the messenger but is Warren even really giving messages anymore or is it just Helaman? Yeah. And on top of all of that, it sounds like Warren's daughter is the only one that is allowed to visit him in prison. Oh. So now I guess she's visiting him and then passing along the message to Helaman. And now Helaman's the big man in charge within the community or with the, I guess, the, the church with the people that are scattered around now. So... 
Yeah, just it's it's interesting. It's uh, h- how much of this is still coming from Warren? Who knows? We don't know. But one thing that has been asked and required is that every member who is still a follower of Warren Jeffs is supposed to send in this survey, which mm. is what we want to share with you guys today. <laughs> Yes. And if you want to hear more stories of what it was like for Sam growing up in polygamy, then please like and subscribe if you want to stay uh, more up to date on what this community is doing. Yes. But And thank you all for, yes. for being here and for already being members. We appreciate it. Yeah, but they are required to send in this survey and they're being asked to send in full body pictures as well with these surveys as to their worthiness. And so, like I said, a lot of people ask us, where the church is headed or how many people still believe. And so we thought it would be good for you guys to hear the survey of those who are still true believers, what their requirements are and what they're being asked of as they are staying committed and faithful to Warren Jess. Yes. So we'll just go through the list uh, really quick and expand um, a lot of these things I'm familiar with. Uh, like the some of the verbiage here is someone from the... Odd outside would read it and say what in the world are they talking about so i'll try to explain some of those i believe there's one or two on this list that i'm still a little confused about just because i've been out of it for so long they come up with new things so yeah we'll do the best we can we'll get into this list so i mean it looks like a homework assignment honestly it's at the end of a revelation and again we'll do some other videos on some of the revelation big things of the revelation it's a lot of the same things you've heard on our channel like don't wear red you're not supposed to be having cell phones with internet. You know, obviously things had gotten a lot more lax with that kind of thing. So a lot of like, you guys aren't doing what you know you're supposed to do. You're not doing what you know you're supposed mm-hmm. to do. And if it wasn't for you guys being um, evil, then Warren Jess would be out of prison by now. Right. You know, blaming, always blaming, blaming it on the members. That's kind of their ammo, their go-to. But, uh, you know, there, there are a few revelations here of things that are completely new and we're not taught or required when I was out there. Yeah. So that those are, those are some things we'll touch on in future videos as well. Yeah, but we'll give you the the faithful um the the, the checklist. The faithful checklist. The simplified the simplified version of the checklist. But it seriously it looks like a homework assignment like it says put the name and the date and then answer these 15 questions. So we'll just run through them real quick, but are you keeping sweet no matter what? So we've talked about that a lot here, but keeping sweet meaning Obey, don't ask questions, be happy about it, live with it. This is the, what this is what God wants, and uh, you just need to keep sweet. Keep sweet. No obey, matter, no obey, matter what, obey. No matter what's obey, asked obey. of you. Yeah. Obey. And it's interesting that they're asking people like, "Have you been keeping sweet?" Because one, for people who don't know, there's like caretakers or priesthood holders over each family and over each member, right? So when they're talking about keeping sweet, they're kind of referring to, are you listening to the person who set out to be in charge of you, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Because that's really the only person to keep sweet to right. now that they're not a tight like community all in the same spot. Back in my day, I guess you could say, uh, <laughs> it was more keep sweet to the prophet because the prophet was in the community was and it was one big community and everyone would see him in church and uh, in different meetings and things. So it was a lot easier to just listen to him directly and be obedient to what he's telling you. And then the fathers in the home would enforce those things that were taught by the prophet. But now it's a little bit different be- being that he's in prison and all that. Yeah. Um, number two, are you full purity living covenant while keeping? Not while keeping, well, W-E-L-L. While keeping. So full purity living is, I mean, the first thing you think of is chastity, Mm -hmm. obviously. And that's that's a big part of it. That's a big, big part of it. What else do they talk about when they're talking about purity? So when they're referring to purity, they are referring to both physically and mentally. So not only purity in no sexual relations, um, at all that aren't that aren't um i guess what's the word that aren't like, approved i yeah. guess is the right word to use by the by the church leaders uh, and especially for those that aren't married you know i mean even to the point of having th- uh, thoughts about any type of sexual thought that is a, a huge no-no and they you know they will say that you'll be cast out by the lord and that you will be chastised and you will be What are some other words they use? But basically, no unclean, as they would say, unclean thoughts about anything. 
Yeah, so keeping it pure. Which the third one is, are you full purity, thought, covenant, well-keeping? So okay, so that, there's Purity the, and thoughts. There's so. the thoughts as well, okay. So purity living, purity thought. Number four is, are you living full consecration and stewardship law? Okay, so that's, the, that's where they have a, a steward, or I guess, is that where they are like will, uh, supposed to give everything? To the church, yeah, I, I think that's what they're referring to here. Is that this this one is where they are supposed to give everything to the church, money, belongings, everything, and then the church decides what is what they what is important for them to have and kind of dis- distributes it throughout the community. Yeah, and that's what consecration. Um, it is interesting, you know, living full consecration. So when they were all in the community, then they would all take everything to the storehouse, and then everything would be distributed back. If you haven't mm-hmm. seen our video with Manti, he talks about the fact that like they were only allowed to get like a week's worth of shampoo, a week's worth of conditioner, because everything would go to the storehouse, and then they would be given back little bits of what they were told that they needed, right? right. Um, that's consecration. When it says stewardship law, I feel like, and I might be totally wrong on this, so someone leave a comment if I'm wrong. I want to know. But my guess is that it would be because they're no longer in one single community anymore, it's hard to consecrate everything. So stewardship right. law would be, my guess, giving everything to the steward of your household or the priesthood holder and letting them decide what everybody would get. Right. Would be my guess. What yes. do you think? It, yes, that is that sounds right. And in some of the homes now, there is no what they would call a head of the house or priesthood holder. Mm-hmm. So there are some people that are some stewards that live outside of the home, or maybe let's say one man has his family over here, but this same man is also in charge of several other families that don't have a man living in that home. Because Warren's kicking more men out again and like calling them out by name, like in this revelation, like calling them out by name, saying what their sin is, why they're going to be kicked out forever. Boom. Just boom, boom, boom. Paragraph after paragraph. So crazy. And these are, these are big names throughout the community. These aren't just some, young guy that no one knows about these are these are men that have been very very important in the community everyone looked up to you know leaders of the community and they and he's just saying they did this sin they did this sin and they're kicked out forever and i'm so curious like some of the sins that they're being accused of i'm so curious whether or not that's actually true so maybe we'll be able to find out a little bit more information do some digging and see if we can see more of that but uh, number five, are you reporting and accounting to authority? So again, a lot of authorities outside the home. So that does take a lot of like reporting to them. And, and I hear, I've heard from a lot of people that have recently moved out of the community that they would not only have to have like a face-to-face interview with these people and talk to them about, you know, how they're being obedient and following the rules, but also they would have to write letters that mm-hmm. would explain how they're being obedient to all of these rules. Oh, that kind of goes into the next one. Are you writing monthly to key holder? Now, uh, babe, do you want to explain to people who don't know what the key, like who the key holder is and why he's called that? Yeah. So there is this thing called priesthood keys. And for those of you that are new here, uh, priesthood, meaning the power of God given to man on earth to act in his name. That's kind of the, the simplified version of what priesthood is. And there are, and then there's the priesthood keys, and there are different types of keys, uh, priesthood keys. But they're referring to the the keys, meaning that they have the authority over everyone else in this circle. Uh, like the the prophet, they say, holds all of the keys of the priesthood, meaning he has. All authority over everyone. Yes. So he can give like certain authority to different people to do different things. Like so and so could marry people, or so and so could do this. But when they say the key Mm -hmm. holder, there's only one key holder over all of the powers of the priesthood on earth, really. Well, there's there's only one man they would say that is the prophet that holds all of the keys. Yeah. So when they talk about the key holder, they're referring to the prophet. So they are expecting everybody to write monthly to key holder. So, okay, so read that again. Read that again. Are you writing monthly to key holder? To, it doesn't say, it says key holder. Key holder, capital okay. K. Key so holder. this is where it gets tricky. They could be referring to Warren or they could be referring to the person put in charge, the man holding the priesthood put in charge over that, over that family or that person. Mm. Um, and because the, the keys of the priesthood can be given to other men under the authority of the of warren that holds all of the keys so that one doesn't i mean i of course the people that are 
answering these questions would know who they're writing to, I imagine. But that's unclear to me if it's referring to Warren himself or just uh, the, the man put in charge of that family or that person. I would guess that it would be Warren because who else would they need to write to? Because most of the other people who are over them are like, even if they're not living with him, they're going to be closer. They're going to have more face-to-face -face contact. True. That's my guess. But I, yeah. again, that's just, just a guess. It's a good, it's a good guess. <laughs> Next, is your house cleaned, deep cleaned monthly or weekly? So this was something that began after I moved out, but uh, this was a requirement of an, a way to keep the evil spirits and uh, things from coming in your home. You actually had to physically clean it and sanitize your home. And I believe Teffy had shared with us, his sister had shared with us some details about this, but they had to like one um, hand was for like cleaning and the other was for drying and they had to like start in, I might be getting this wrong, but they had to start at the ceiling like in the middle of the ceiling and work in like a circular motion mm -hmm. all the way down the walls into the floor cleaning and i believe for a while it was super extreme wasn't it like was it every day oh, well, or every i believe week? this is where they're referring like, to it once every, a month once monthly a month is or the, weekly is what it said right are you doing that monthly or weekly so so from from what i hear the monthly was the one that, that you're talking about where you clean the entire house from ceiling from to the ceiling floor, floor was the monthly cleaning there was also a weekly cleaning that was less intense yeah. It was just more of a, I'm not sure, maybe a quick wipe down, but uh, not not as intense as that one. Yeah, so. so knowing how often they deep clean their homes is a requirement. Um, when is the last time a regular person... Tell me how often in the comments, <laughs> and I'm asking a lot this video, but like leave in the comments when the last time you cleaned your deep cleaned your ceiling was. Like, I am so curious because... I, Deep cleaning the ceiling. Yeah, a lot of people will put a flat paint on the ceiling um, that has no shine to it, meaning, and, and basically, You're with, never with, clean it. with the knowledge that they're never going You're to actually clean ceiling. it. Because you, for those of you that have flat paint on your walls, tell me how easy it is to clean flat paint. <laughs> so anyway, it's very unlikely for that people are up there washing their ceilings, but they do. But they do. Okay. Um, nine. Are you reading the appointed scriptures daily? I'd say that's very common in all religions. So in a lot of religions, most religions. at least. Uh -huh. um, have you been memorizing what is appointed? So there. So I know that, like in the LDS Church, they. I don't know if it's required, but they ask that you memorize the Articles of Faith. For yeah. as an example, uh, when I was. Yeah. Uh, not required, but like. Recommended. Recommended. Yeah. So here they're requiring that they memorize certain certain scriptures and things. So. Yeah. That's interesting and was not anything. When I was in, in the FLDS church as a young boy, I do remember them. I don't know. I, I guess it was a requirement, but everyone was supposed to memorize the articles of faith before being baptized. So I assumed it was the same in the LDS, but I could be wrong there. In primary, it was highly encouraged and you would get like... Um like a special treat and recognition okay. when you did that. So it was very uh, pushed a lot in primary, normally before you were 12. But I mean, obviously, if you do before you're eight, that was even better. Yeah. When I think of memorization of things that are appointed, I would think that in the LDS temple, there are things that you need to memorize. And so I'm very curious with the FLDS, which things were considered appointed um, as to needing to memorize them, if they're just talking about scripture or if there's something of more significance, like in the LDS, where obviously um, temple things are way yeah. more significant and much more sacred. And so I wonder if it's something quite as special and sacred as the I'm LDS. I'm not sure. This is something, or something that, more generic. But definitely they're, they're giving them something to memorize. It doesn't yeah. really say here what it's for. But uh, for those of our viewers here that aren't sure what I just I realize sometimes we say certain things that you probably have no idea what we're talking about because we're so used to growing up with these um, terms but what would be a quick description of what the articles of faith are oh the yeah that's a good point the articles of faith are 13 statements that um, Joseph Smith had written to help people um, be able to quickly share what their faith is about. So or, yeah. this like the basic principles of the religion as a whole. So, you yeah. know, first is, um, we believe in God, the eternal father the and in his son, Jesus, Jesus Christ yeah. and in the Holy ghost. Yep. Yeah. That's the first article. That's of the faith. first article yeah. of faith, right? So you memorize these 13 articles of faith 
uh, as a way to be able to, if someone asks you questions, you can... Like, what is it you believe? What is it you believe? Mm -hmm. There's 13 statements that are like the core of the beliefs of the LDS Church, and those are called the Articles of Faith. Did you ever memorize all of them? Oh, absolutely. See, I tried so many times, and I always got so close, but I never could memorize all of them for yeah. some reason. I guess oh. my, my memory ain't that good, I guess. <laughs> no, I was that kid. Yeah, I got... Those memorized, I did like if there was an award to get or some kind of certification to get. Like I, they had varsity in Utah. There's varsity lettering for seminary, so like varsity lettering for sports, and there's varsity lettering where you like had to me memorize. I think it was like 50 scriptures a year or something. Anyway, I did all the things. I loved it. Anything that there was to be achieved. <laughs> yeah, you're you're a go getter, so that's yeah. that's great. I, I tried. I, I think there was some, one point in my life where I had them all memorized, but then didn't keep practicing and it didn't last very long. So. I'm now like trying to think if I could repeat them all right now, but I don't want to do that on the video in case I can, because it's been a long time since I've had to. Because I feel like once you leave primary, you don't actually use them as that often, right? right. It's a great way to teach children the basics of what religion they're in. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like after that, you don't use it as much. So I'd have to think right. of whether or not I could do all 13. I don't know. Yeah, I fair. bet you I could get most of them if I got started like with the first couple words, but I digress. Okay. <laughs> um, are you full covenant keeping of no gossiping? That one's pretty straightforward. There's also, you got to think there's a, there's a lot to gossip about when can your you, religious leader can, is in prison. I, I, was so. going to, I was going to say, <laughs> I can understand why they wouldn't want any gossiping going around. Yeah. It, there'd have to be a ton. Like if your religious leader was in prison and you're receiving revelation, whether you I just can't imagine a world where people wouldn't want to gossip, where you would be able to help yourself. Can you imagine? Uh, I mean, I, I totally understand where they're coming from. It's like, hey, I know there's a lot of people out there questioning what's going on, where these revelations are coming Don't from. Don't gossip. All of these keep things. sweet. Don't gossip. One, this just one, once again, a way to keep everyone from actually discussing it amongst themselves and learning more, just kind of sticking with what they're told to do yeah. yeah number 12 are you covenant keeping of no sympathy against authority see this is one i was wondering what exactly they're meaning by that no sympathy against authority my guess would be huh that is so that's no very interesting no, no sympathy against authority like is that meaning that don't show any sympathy towards those that go against authority don't show no sympathy are you covenant keeping of no sympathy against authority so yes i think that i yeah. think that's what they mean like if like you people see who someone, are going against authority you, don't have sympathy yeah. for them let's say your sibling in the house is is saying certain things that that goes against authority or isn't following the rules instead of instead of just keeping quiet and keeping their secret i guess you could say you have to report it to authority. Like no, no sympathy towards those people. Yeah. Or especially like the fathers that are being kicked out, right? Like you would feel bad for them or feel sad for what's going on with them and their families. And I can see them being like, don't feel sympathy for them. They made their own beds, you know, like, yeah, yeah. that's kind of crazy. Um, are you living hmm. celestial oneness in the home? So I mean, I think that's just so that being families. Yes. Yes. But also like, celestial oneness i mean i guess it's <laughs> how, how can you possibly try to stick together as a family when they're being torn apart in so many ways I so i think it's more spiritual like i wonder if this one is towards the women who are being ripped apart and then they're being placed into other homes or they're being mm. placed with new men and saying are you staying with celestial oneness, meaning that you are staying with whoever is appointed as your celestial partner rather than sticking with your earthly one or the the person that you love? And I, I believe it also means like instead of focusing on what's going on on this earth, focus on what is to celestial. come in, in the next life. In the, when you Because if you're obedient, you're told that you will one day be able to live in God's presence, which is the celestial kingdom. Yep. So I think just they're saying forget about what's going on here focus on the end goal yeah for sure um are you full honest truth telling in confession of sins and giving accounting to authority so are you making sure you confess all your sins again i feel like that's 
pretty common in a lot of Christian religions. Yeah. And I know that they have to do this regularly now where they have to go and confess their sins to their leaders. Well, and so many more things in the FLDS are sins, like wearing red on your shoes. Mm -hmm. They would have to confess that. Um, spiking your hair as a man, they would have to confess that. So wearing leggings <laughs> too tight on your calves. You know, so there's way more things that would be considered a sin that need to be confessing. For yeah. instance, like in the LDS, there's not as many sins that are confession worthy where you would actually go to a bishop and confess compared to the FLDS. Yeah, some so. of these things Melissa is mentioning are actually in their revelations and we'll talk about that more. But yes, yeah, some very strange rules of things that they would have to confess about or talk about. So... Yeah, and in the FLDS, they have to confess anytime they don't follow any of the rules. Again, a lot of religions, you know, it's big sins are mm. what you would have to go confess. Or in the LDS, it's the bigger sins, right? right? Like little things about, like not dressing modestly. You don't need to go confess to a bishop if you wore something inappropriate or mm. said something inappropriate or swore. Like those type of things wouldn't. But in the FLDS, there's a lot more accountability right. for every single thing they do. Everything. And I, so I got a little glimpse of this at one point, but it was very rare. It was very uncommon when I was growing up in the FLDS. But when I was a young teenager, we got a random phone call, or I guess my father got a random phone call, and uh, he was told to get all of his sons that were still living in the home together in his office. And then on the other end, on the speakerphone, was, I believe at the time, the bishop or one of Warren's counselors one of the high leaders in the church, was asking each and every one of us, and this wasn't individually, this was as a group with our father sitting there on speakerphone, everyone listening. No pressure. Uh, certain questions and very specific questions. Have you done this? Have you done this? Like, have you listened to Gentile music? Have you watched any movies? Have you uh, had any type of relationship with any uh, women in the community? And those, those were asked of us very specifically. Did they think you'd actually confess in front of your father and your brothers? Uh, I imagine they did. And did anyone well, confess? So this is this is kind of, <laughs> this is kind of how it started, and this is how they would strike fear in our hearts that they were actually receiving revelation from God about these things, because they told us, they said, we have felt and received revelation that some of your sons have been committing certain sins. You need to bring all of your sons together. And I think, and then they, were, they would ask questions that uh, they would already knew that probably almost, if not every boy in the community was doing one of these things. And then they would make it seem like, but it was this, it was this big revelation. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so, and then we would answer the question to these uh specific questions they would ask and and uh and then for those that were committing really the, the more serious sins i guess you could say those men, those boys or those young men were forced out of the community and that was the end of it uh, did you ever see that happen to any of your brothers uh one of my brother uh, two two of my brothers yes like yeah in that kind of public space or did so, they get, or did like later they get called separately? And so the, the two, so in that exact instance that I'm referring to, nobody w had committed a serious enough sin to get kicked out of the community. Now, I don't know if later on one of the brothers went back and felt like, Oh, I know, I know that, uh, God knows. And I know the prophet knows that I did this, so I better go confess. Mm. But later, later on, there were two of my brothers that were forced out of the community because of something they did against the church or something that went against the church's rules. Dang. Yeah. Crazy. Okay. Last one. Are you living by every word of God of the Lord Jesus Christ in your daily living? I think that's a pretty common one, right? Yeah, that, um, that's not that strange when it comes no. to religious uh, religion in general. Yeah. So those are the 15 questions that are being asked of all of the faithful followers of Warren Jess right now. They are having to submit these. Um, they're also being asked questions about... Um, like their physical appearance, they're having to add pictures. And there's a lot of stuff that's going to be coming up and happening that we'll try to kind of cover as it as it happens. And yeah, uh, it's it's yeah, crazy. It's a, lot, a lot's going on. You know, as I read through those those that list, I, the the one at the end where it says, "Are you following Christ's teachings?" Right. It's interesting how 
uh, for a church that claims to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ and claims that, that Jesus Christ is the head of the church and the leader of the church, it's interesting that that question is the one at the very, very, very bottom. <laughs> like, wouldn't you think that would be the first question? <laughs> like, is it, or, you know, I don't know. Yeah, no, just, that's a good point. I, it, it's just interesting. So, yeah. but yes, lots of things going on. We have a lot more to cover but we just wanted to kind of go over the, the basics for now and then we'll dive into it a little bit more in detail, I guess. Yeah, and some other videos. But if you guys want to know what it was like for Sam growing up in polygamy, please like and subscribe. And we're just super grateful for all of you. Again, sorry that we've been kind of MIA. September was a crazy month. We had a lot of stuff going on, but we are happy to be back at it. Yes. And we appreciate, appreciate yes. all of you. Thank you all for your support, your love. We really appreciate you. Have a good one. We'll talk to you soon. Talk to you all soon.